What's up guys? So I've been using this Flip32 F4 board for some time now. I feel like I've used it long enough to give you a pretty good review for it. First let's go over price and the different models because there are many different ones and I know it, it gets confusing with the, uh, the, the Flip32s and then the Omnibus and what, what all is the difference. Alright so this is the specific one we are looking at today. Uh, the Flip32 F4 Revo Pin Header Edition for $17. You also have a Battle Edition for $19 and then a Special Edition for $20. The one and only difference is the uh, Revo Pin Header Edition has a MPU 6000 gyro. The Battle Edition has the MPU 650 or 6500 and the Special Edition uses the 9250. That's it. Other than that, they were exactly the same. Now, these are not to be confused with the Flip32 Omnibus and all the different models of the Omnibus because there's four, but technically like eight different models of the Omnibus. All, if it has the Omnibus name in it, those are the ones that have the built-in on-screen display, where these three do not. Now, uh, a lot of you guys have said you don't like using readytoflyquads.com. Uh, I personally do just because they're only a couple hundred miles from me, uh, so shipping is super fast. But I have found this on Banggood for $22. Uh, though if you are spending $22, I would just recommend doing the, uh, and this is a clone by the way. Pretty much every flight controller on Banggood is, is a clone. Uh, not saying there's anything wrong with clones, I'm just saying beware. Uh, but yeah, there's a clone of the F4 Omnibus with the built-in on-screen display for $25. So, I mean, if you're going to spend $22, you might as well spend $3 more and get the on-screen display. Uh, but anyway, moving on. So now we've got the price and different models and all that jazz out the way. What do I think about it? I think if you're someone that just wants to slap a receiver and an on-screen display on this and go race or do some acrobatic flying, then... Uh, this is a great price point and great flight controller for that. If you're someone that wants, if you just want everything to work without having to work, if that makes any sense, then this is probably not the flight controller for you. So let me explain what I'm talking about. This is, uh, it's called the Revo Pen Header Edition. The reason uh, it's named that is because it uses the same pen out as the CC3D Revo. And this is a very old flight controller. This thing was probably the first F4 board. Uh, it came out, what, over a year ago? But anyway, it, it, it uses the same pen out. So that means it uses the same firmware. The problem is, whenever they created this board, uh, I guess you could say they dicked up the circuitry, so the LEDs and buzzer was not working. But with the release of Betaflight 3.1, someone actually made specific firmware for these boards and it's called the AirBot F4. So yeah, use this firmware here, AirBot F4 and not the uh, Revo firmware. The only difference between the firmware, and I've, I've looked at everything, uh, they just remapped these pins to make the buzzer work and the LEDs kind of work. Like I said, they messed up the circuitry in here and uh, you still have to run power and ground on the same pins you were supposed to use for LEDs, except your uh, LED signal pin will actually go to uh, motor output number five uh, signal pin, and then they will work. One thing I forgot to mention is, yes, I, I did make a video showing you how you can remap your uh, motor pins. So you think you might be able to remap the LED pin back to where it should be, which I've already found it for you. It's on pin D2 of the processor, but don't even try it. I've tried it and all it's going to do is lock up your flight controller. And whoever made the separate firmware just for these boards, um, I'm sure they tried the same thing and that's why they ended up using channel number five. So don't even try it. Which brings me to the next problem. Um, not really a problem, but typically all these pins are supposed to be five volts and this goes for you know almost all flight controllers. But the only one that gets 5 volts is this one right here. So you can, uh, this is your receiver pins, so you would have ground power and then your S bus or whatever signal wire going to this pin, and it will power your receiver. Uh, 
but all these other pins are only getting like 1.3 volts, something like that. Uh, I don't know why I haven't looked at the circuitry. Uh, I really don't care to figure it out. The, just run your LED power and ground wires over here and then signal over there. Buzzer will work as long as you use the AirBot F4 firmware. This does also have a built-in voltage regulator, meaning you can power it with the full voltage of your battery, meaning you don't need a PDB with a 5 volt regulator or anything like that. Uh, and also, this will place voltage, because the flight controller can see the full voltage of your battery, is placing the voltage in beta flight, clean flight, your on-screen display, telemetry, everything. You do not need additional VBAT wires. I know some of you in the past have used flight controllers that have VBAT pins, and these Flip32 boards have VBAT written on them, but that is not what you think it is. It's not your old day, you know, normal VBAT pins. So only place one power and one ground from your PDB to this board to power it. That's it. No more. Uh, a common question I get, even with the Omnibus flight controllers, is uh, is it normal for this voltage regulator to get so hot? Like it will almost burn you if you touch it. Yes, for a voltage regulator that large, that is pretty normal. A lot of guys are worried about them frying, but uh, all I can say is out of my like 10 Omnibus flight controllers that I have, not one has fried yet. I have seen on the forums where they have fried on some other guys. Uh, I don't know what the cause of that was. Maybe maybe it fried on its own. Maybe they do actually fry. Uh, but in my experience, ha one half of the time it's user error and they just don't want to admit it. Either that or they overloaded it. Uh, especially with the Omnibus, flight controllers have them built in LSDs. You know, guys are placing their receiver, telemetry, on screen display, uh, LEDs, you know, 32 LEDs with a buzzer and powering their camera and video transmitter and then they wonder why this voltage regulator fry is trying to power seven different things uh, that's gonna do it as far as powering this and what I'm about to talk about uninversing telemetry just watch go to my flip32 or the omnibus playlist I'll leave a link to it in the description below so you can check it out just watch all those videos because these boards if you choose to purchase this has the same exact pinout as the Omnibus flight controllers. So I'm not redoing those videos because it would be a waste of time. It's, it's exactly the same. It just doesn't have an on-screen display. Anyway, if you use FreeSky receivers and maybe even other brands, I don't know, I haven't used other brands, but uh, the S-Bus and telemetry signals from the receivers are inverted. All F3 boards that I have used have come with uh, hardware inverters on all three UARTs. But so far, the F4 boards, the, the few F4 boards that I've used, because they're still relatively new, so far all the ones I've used have had a inverter on only one UART, and it's always the UART used for your SBUS receiver. But the two other UARTs do not have that, uh, you know, the hardware needed to uninvert the signal. You can still use telemetry. Like I said, watch the video on how I uh, wire in a FreeSky XSR and X4 RSB into the Omnibus F4, and you will see how it's done. It's just more work. So that's that's the whole point I, I was trying to make, you know, 20 minutes ago. No, not not that long ago. But uh, so that's going to do it. Overall, like I said, now now you probably have a better understanding of what I was talking about. If you just want a receiver and on-screen display, those are going to work perfect. You just slap it on and go. If you want LEDs, remember you have to do, uh, you know, wire it to a different pin. You're not going to have a 5 volt pins here. These 5 volt pins in the middle, on the back side, these do work, but not these. And if you want telemetry, you have to uninverse the signal yourself. So overall, I like it for 17 bucks for an F4 board, and uh, you know I, I don't really connect that much to it. It works for me. That's going to do it guys, so if you like this, then give me a like. If you have any questions, leave it in the uh, comment box below. Look in the description for links to uh, the Omnibus videos, and I will see you again soon.